All right, yesterday I got a request, private message, um, asking if I have any videos on Matthew chapter 11, verses 11 through 15. And I have mentioned it in many different studies, but um, I haven't actually done a little kind of an expository thing, so to speak, on these verses here. And with all this anti-Semitic stuff rising up and, and um, saying that the kingdom's been removed and all this other stuff, I thought I'd do a real quick video on those couple verses and explain it. So if you have a King James Bible, turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 11, starting at verse 11. It says here, Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Okay? Now a lot of people, when they see heaven, they think, well, that's where God's at. Kingdom of heaven must be where God is. Because there's also the, the term kingdom of God in your New Testament. So kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven are one and the same. No. Stay with me. Verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. That scripture right there totally demolishes all the people who try to argue that the kingdom of heaven is where God dwells. Okay? The kingdom of heaven is never one time a reference to where God dwells in heaven, in eternity. Okay? There's no one that's going to take it by force. Okay? And what a lot of these, these uh, replacement theology heretics will do, they'll say, well, yes, but there's war in heaven in Revelation chapter 12. Okay? Did the violent take it by force? No. Nobody can take God's realm from him by force. This is not talking about heaven where God dwells, eternity. It's not talking about that. There's never been a war up there, and no one's ever taken anything by force. Okay, The war that does eventually come, nobody takes anything by force. Satan and his angels get kicked out. He doesn't take anything by force. So to try and apply this to the realm where God is, it doesn't work. And I'm going to show you why it's so important, why they have to take this verse verse 12, and try to apply it to heaven and not to earth. Okay, Because you see, if there is a coming kingdom of heaven, a millennial kingdom, then that those specific promises that were made to Abraham and to his seed would come into play, and then that would mean that Jesus Christ would rule and reign for the thousand years, the millennial kingdom, the premillennial coming of Jesus Christ, which is what the Bible teaches, and you see, that mess up people's plans like, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe the uh, Roman Catholics that try to teach amillennial uh, views. Amillennialism is that there is no millennial kingdom that's coming. It's, we're actually in it right now, and the Pope is God's man. That's why the Pope wants to take over the city of Jerusalem and set up his throne there. And that's why the Antichrist will eventually be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. Okay, Anything that God does, Satan will always counterfeit. Right? That doesn't mean that Jerusalem is an evil, wicked city and always will be. Jerusalem is an evil, wicked city right now, but not when Jesus Christ comes back after the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to come and it's going to get real bad there in Jerusalem, but then Jesus Christ is going to come back and it's his city by inheritance. Okay, But let's continue reading here. She said to verse 15, For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, Dispensational difference here. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. All right, you see, wait, wait a second there. He's comparing John the Baptist to Elias, or Elijah, if you want to do the Hebrew word. Elias is Greek coming to English. So how could John be Elijah? It doesn't make any sense. Well, you see, there are prophecies saying that before the kingdom is set up, that Moses and Elijah would come back. The two witnesses that you see about in Revelation, the book of Revelation, they come back and they prophesy. prophesy. You know, a, a thousand and... Let me, let me go to the passage. My mind is jumbled with a lot of other things right now, so I don't want to misquote uh, what the Bible actually says, trying to think from memory. Doing a bunch of different videos right now, so please bear with me. Uh, Revelation chapter... 
11 verse 3, and I, give, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Okay, now, and I've done other studies on this. They are definitely Moses and Elijah. That's why you have the Mount of Transfiguration. Moses and Elijah show up. The last book of your Old Testament, if you go to Malachi, um, chapter 4, verse 4, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Right there is a prophecy. And what happens is Jesus Christ shows up on the earth. They start preaching the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why? The king's there. He's walking around the streets of the city that's going to be his someday. He's walking around in Jerusalem. And he's saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hey, Elijah hasn't come, but John the Baptist is proclaiming that the king is here. He's preaching the kingdom of heaven too. You know, and he sees Jesus and he says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. They're, your king is here to the Jewish people, to the, the people of Israel. What do they do? They rejected John the Baptist. They reject his, his testimony about Jesus Christ and they rejected Jesus Christ and they crucified their king in his own city, in Jerusalem. That was a dumb thing to do. And what did they say? They said, we have no king but Caesar. Oh boy. So for the last approximately 2,000 years, the greatest persecutor of the Jewish people has been Rome, Caesar. So what we see here in these verses, verse 14, and if ye will receive it, the kingdom of heaven, receive your king, this is Elias, which was for to come. In other words, Elijah is there. Elias was prophesied to come to proclaim the king coming, Jesus Christ. And he's saying, if you'll accept it, if you'll accept John the Baptist, you know, you won't, you won't have to have a lot of the bad things happen to you. But, of course, they did. And, you know, you say, well, I don't understand. If, if Jesus Christ is God and he's there on the earth prophesying that this stuff would happen, yet he knows that there's gonna, they're going to reject him and whatever else, you know, and it would be put off and you'd have the church age and everything else, and then the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, everything. Why would he give him this opportunity if he just knows that they're going to fail? Uh, well, why does God give every man the ability to get saved? You know, uh, he gives everyone the, the ability to get saved, even though he knows who's going to reject and who's going to accept. He knows who's going to go to hell, and yet he gives them life. You know, why? Because God is a God of justice. God will not condemn somebody without any kind of a chance at all. It's not going to happen. All right, everybody out there gets a chance. Everybody out there has free will. Uh, it's very important to remember that. So, what's going on here in Matthew chapter 11 and the book of Matthew, by the way, as, as I've said in other studies, the book of Matthew is the only book in your entire New Testament that contains the term kingdom of heaven. Now, there are other places where the term kingdom of God is used. And again, it's a whole other study. And this, this kingdom of God can refer to the kingdom of heaven. But the kingdom of heaven can never refer to this uh, spiritual kingdom of God. Let me show you the, the verses on this real quickly. It's in the book of Romans. I'll tell you where you can turn to to find it. Uh, I'm trying to think of where that verse is at. Okay, Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. All right, so when you see the kingdom of God, so and so will not inherit the kingdom of God, it's talking about. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. In other words, you won't have a right relationship with the Lord in the Pauline epistles there. So, you know, that's it's a very important distinction to get, especially now with all these people trying to come out and undo the promises that the Lord made to the nation of Israel that he would rule and reign from Jerusalem. They're trying to take his rule from him. The Pope is, is coming in, setting up his throne in Jerusalem. The Antichrist will one day rule and reign from the rebuilt temple there. Um, it's a bad news. It's real bad news. Uh, so 
don't let anybody deceive you into thinking that that uh, there is no you know the kingdom of heaven is somehow God's realm and it has nothing to do with an earthly physical kingdom. Uh, it's very very important that that earthly physical kingdom um, is going to be reestablished in the future, and that the Lord Jesus Christ and His saints and the Jewish people um, will be there for that time. So I hope that hopefully let. Hopefully that answers your question, and uh, we'll be coming out with some more FAQs in the future. By the way, I wanted to make a point about that. Um, I just kind of took a break from the FAQ thing. Uh, we had quite a few of those uh, done, and so I'm going to be coming back to that again. I know a lot of people sent them in and requests in, and there's some really good questions I'm going to be answering um, as time permits. But I've been really kind of wanting to get back into doing more bigger length studies again on the secondary channel. I miss doing that. I miss going through a lot of scripture and everything. So I've been working on that, but we will be getting back to the FAQs. Uh, but just wanted to answer this question because I really don't have anything on it. And it's very important in this time of, of as people are, the spirit is changing more into the Antichrist spirit where people are really starting to come out against the nation of Israel. So uh, that will be it for this video. Thank you for watching.